This is what we call a cover cushion. It's basically pipe insulation, foam pipe insulation. You can buy it at any Home Depot or Lowe's or any type store of that nature. And you buy one that fits three quarter copper tubing. And what we're gonna do is put it on our pipe frame and it'll cushion the cover and extend the life of the cover. Now it comes with a slit in it. Basically, we're gonna just open that up so we can put it on our pipe. Put it on, onto the tubing, bring it around the bend and up past our joint like so. And we're gonna cut this off. The way we hold it in place, is we're gonna take some electrical tape, start a wrap of tape on the pipe first, go around once or twice, and continue up onto the end of the foam, like so. And then we're gonna do the same at the bottom. And you can put a wrap around the middle, like that. Now this will cushion this corner really nice, extend the life of your cover. You can use this any place you think you want to put padding. We can put a piece in between the ribs on the ridge pole and wherever there's a bend. You can install this on the ridge pole. Very easy to do. It'll also cushion the cover at that location. All these little things are easy to do, inexpensive. You could buy a whole package of this for somewhere around $3 and I think 75 cents. And it'll stay on there for years. Basically just put it on like that. We're gonna tape it like we did the other one. And then you could leave it there from year to year. Use it over and over again. You'll probably get two, three years out of it at least. And it's so inexpensive, it works very well. And that's it. You can put a piece in the middle if you want. Makes a real nice cushion for the, for the cover. We want to protect the upholstery here. The cover is going to definitely touch this here. So we'll take some old towels or whatever material you have that's soft, lay it on there to protect that. Now places like this where the top attaches and whatever, there's some sharp edges and corners, you should pad these to protect the cover. Now you can use a, a, a towel wrapped around with some tape. You can use some rug, carpet. But I like to use a noodle, which is, comes from, basically it's a swimming pool noodle. And you can cut it off long enough to fit over the top of this, like so. And then I'm gonna split it down the middle. Be careful with the razor knife, don't cut yourself. All right, we've split it down the middle. I'm just gonna slide it on here, like so. And if you want, you can put a wrap of tape around it, hold it in tight, and it'll work real nice to pad that area. To measure for your cover, we're gonna start about a foot below the deck line. Follow the contour of the frame, like so, up to the middle, so we're gonna double that. To measure for the length, we're gonna start about a foot below the deck line. Follow the contour of the ridge pole, that's the center pole. We're gonna go all the way down the ridge pole to the back of the boat and drop it over the motor and where it ends. That's gonna be our length dimension. This Ultra Cover is 18 by 31, comes in a box like this, usually ships UPS. We're gonna open it up carefully, don't wanna cut too deep with the knife. And there's our cover inside. Ultra Cover, 18 by 31. All right, now we're gonna unroll the Ultra Cover. Fold the side over to that, like so. This is the length and this is the width. Drag it over a little. That's it right there. Line the two halves up. Okay. Let's fix this crease.
Okay. Now, we're gonna take a magic marker and we're gonna make a dotted line down this crease. That's gonna be our center line to go on the ridge pole, which you'll be able to see this from inside the boat. All right, let's open it up. Like so, put that there. And this we're gonna fold over in small increments, about a foot, foot and a half. And then again, one more time. Okay, slide the cover back, all the way. Open this side up. Open it up. Fold it over. Again. 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 Now we're gonna do this again on this side. Let me see where our dotted lines are, okay. Fold it over, again, one more. All right, and then bring this one over the top. Okay, then we're gonna roll from the back to the front. Get the broom, Henry, we'll just dust it off. All right, we've, we've put some strapping pieces under the boat to the other side, so we'll have some ready to tie the cover down because we wouldn't want a gust of wind to come and pick up the cover. As long as you have a couple of clips on it, it's not gonna go anywhere. Makes it a little easy when you put it on. All right, we're gonna bring this up on the boat. We're gonna set it on the ridge pole, and we're gonna roll it down the length of the ridge pole and then drop the sides off. All right, what we're gonna do is put this up on top of the ridge pole. We have our dotted line on here, which will show us center of the cover. We're gonna roll this out. Take a little more back. Right down the middle. Now we gotta pull it this way to get the dotted line in the middle. All right, we want that dotted line on the ridge pole because that's dead center of the cover. So we can just pull the cover over slightly like so. Now we know we're centered on the cover. We're gonna start putting our clips on and tie it down. We'll start in the middle and work forward and aft. Part A goes behind the cover. Part B is the slide piece, goes on here like so. Slide it together. Take your first strap that we ran in earlier. Snug it down. And just put a half inch in it for now, that's all. And we're gonna do the same as we go down the line. We put these about every two feet. Now we recommend using this flat strapping to tie the cover down. It's good for all kinds of tying and bracing if you wanna tie the frame. The reason why we recommend this, this does not stretch. Once you tie this down tight, it stays tight. After the cover's been on for about a week, it may relax a little bit. Just adjust them so they're all snug and tight to keep the cover down tight on the frame. If the cover starts moving on the frame, that's when they self-destruct. You want to keep the cover down tight on the frame. Then we'll trim these off later. These are just the first lines to keep it on, so in case any wind would come, we don't lose the cover, that doesn't fly off. We have our dotted line to show the center. We're going to bring that down in the center of the boat and put a clip on it here and bring it to a place where we can tie it. Now we've tied the center down and we're gonna make a pleat at this corner. What we're gonna do in this particular one, we're gonna pleat back, folding it around, like so. 
We're going to pleat it like that. And we're going to hold this in place with a cover clip and we'll trim the excess off. And what I'm going to do is put a cover clip here in this fold from underneath like so, and then we're going to tie this back. One advantage of this cover is it can be trimmed with a scissor if needed. What we've done on this side is we've pleated this. We've taken cover clips, tied the pleat back. I'll show you, I'm gonna open this up so you can see what was done. Take off the cover clip. We've grabbed two pieces of material here in order to make this pleat. And we've actually folded the material like so. We have a clip here that runs back with a piece of strapping on an angle and we've just folded over the excess, brought it up here and we've put a cover clip on. We've installed the cover clip and we've threaded our strapping material through the ring. We're going to just pull it down tight and then just tie it off. Just use a couple of half hitches if you like or whatever and that'll hold the pleat in place and make a good corner. Pleating the cover is the preferred method. By adding the cross ties, this will give you additional protection from high winds. Cover clips can be used on angles to help hold the pleat in place. What we've done here is we've cut this cover so we could use the sealant tape to actually make a custom fit. Instead of using pleats, we used pleats on the opposite side, which I'll show you next, and we're going to show you how we did this cut. What we're going to do now is we're going to pull this material back on this side and also back towards the front on this side. Try to bring them together because we want to cut all this excess off of here. We're going to do it in two cuts, one a rough cut and then a final cut, and then we're going to put our tape over it. We'll show you how that's done. All right, we're going to make a cut up. I made a cut right in that corner, and with this is all excess material, we're going to trim this off, but we're going to leave enough three or four inches past that, so we'll have something to tape to. Now that we've made the two cuts, and we made them a little big, a little excess material, we're going to pull the material, get it where we want it, and we're going to take a stapler, put it over here, and sort of staple the material where we want it. Do the same this way. This is giving us our nice seam here. There we go. All right, now we're gonna continue on down because we have to change the angle here. All right, now from this point down, it's a different angle, so we have to cut it, the material a little differently. We don't want to cut too much off. We need to have something to tape to. Trim this off a little more here. Okay, and we'll staple this together. And then we'll make our final cut. Now we're gonna staple this where we want it. Now that we've stapled it, we've got the general shape, we're going to trim this a final trim, but we want to leave enough material to overlap, 
so we can put our tape on it. Now we're going to make our final cut. Remember we want to stay off those staples at about two inches and we're going to trim it all the way up. We're cutting both pieces at once. All right, we're going to continue cutting these right up to the top. Remember, leave about two inches for overlap, and then we're going to take the staples out. What we've done is we folded one under, one over, and we're going to hold it temporarily with masking tape just to hold it in place. We'll put a few of these on just to hold the cover where we want it. Then as we tape, we'll remove those. All right, the next step, we're going to put the sealant tape on. We're going to have someone on the inside with a piece of wood just to hold and support the seam. So when we press on it with the tape, it'll, it'll have a little backing to it. We want to clean the cover wherever the tape is going to make contact. And the best thing to use is denatured alcohol, stove alcohol, but not rubbing alcohol, because rubbing alcohol has some oil in it. So we want to just clean this general area here so we know we're going to get a good, clean area for the tape to stick on. This is sealing tape. It's four inches wide. It has a special adhesive back. You have to peel the paper off, but once it makes contact with the cover, it cannot be lifted and moved as, as you could like with masking tape or any other kind of tape. So you want to line this up exactly where it's got to go from the beginning and have it straight where you want it to go. We're going to peel off the back. And we're going to start at the top. We have someone inside with a, a board so it'll support the area where we're pressing the tape on at this joint. We can press the tape down. And once we get to our masking tape, we're going to take that off. We're going to take this tape off. This is the last of the masking tape. And we're going to finish pulling our sealing tape down across the joint. And we'll continue on down the side of the boat. We're going to come down a little more. And I think we're going to cut this piece of tape because we're going to change the angle slightly. All right, we're going to cut this tape off because we're going to use a little different run now. We have to change the angle. So we'll cut it here, peel the rest of the paper off, and we'll stick that down tight. And we're going to go different now for this. All right, we're going to cut a little more of this off. We have a little excess here. So we're going to trim this another time, bring it a little closer here, and then we're going to put another piece of tape on. Now what we're going to do is staple these two together just to hold the bottom in the place where we want it here. And then we're going to put a piece of tape here to hold this and bring a strip of tape straight down. Just to hold it in place like that. Now I'm going to measure for a piece of tape here. We're running on a little different angle. That's why we stopped. And we're going to bring this down just to where we want it at the bottom, leaving enough for a little overlap at the top, we're going to cut this off over here. We're going to peel the back, exposing the, the adhesive. But now we have to line this up where we want it, which is going to be right there. We're going to overlap that other tape by a little bit. And then we're going to peel the backing. We're going to take the masking tape off. And we're going to continue down with our sealing tape over the seam. And 
the excess piece we're just going to fold underneath. All right, the tape is installed. It'll stay on. It's waterproof and it's as strong as the cover because it has the mesh built right in it. 